My name is Robin Mohilner. I'm a licensed psychotherapist in the state of California, in Los Angeles, California. I work for an organization called the Life Adjustment Team, as well as having a private practice in Los Angeles. This video is going to address what medicine does and what it doesn't do for people who are living with bipolar disorder. I myself, I forgot to share this, but I myself am a therapist who is living with bipolar disorder. So instead of sharing from this perspective of everyone's story, I'm going to use my own story because medication does affect us differently. Um, this is based on common shared experience, though. So let's, let's talk about what medicine does. It contains, prevents, and stabilizes episodes of mania and depression. And for so many years, for the last 50 years of lithium, I'm, I've been on lithium for 16 years now, but it's been around 50 years, they weren't quite sure how it worked. But today, they've discovered that lithium plays a huge role in what's called our circadian rhythm, which is our body's biological clock that tells us when to sleep, when to eat, when to have energy, when not to... It, it basically regulates everything. Every organ in our body is a part of this circadian rhythm. And it is believed that mania may occur when the circadian rhythm gets knocked out of place by things like excitement and stress and uncertainty and, and all of the things that, that potentially trigger episodes knock the circadian rhythm off, which is why it's so hard to sleep and which is why our appetite change and which is why our sex drive change. All of our drives as human beings change due to mania and depression, and this may be why. So, so that's some good news that we're figuring it out. Now let's talk about what medicine doesn't do. Medicine does not stop emotional roller coasters. It does not. Everybody wishes it would, but it does not stop emotional roller coasters. So let's talk about why. Emotional roller coasters are the result of a, a wound, whether it be a, a, a current wound or a wound deep from our past that, gets, that either gets poked or torn open or something like that, or it's caused by what's called unmet needs. And when we either have wounds be poked or unmet needs, people with bipolar disorder experience emotional roller coasters in spite of medication. And that's the benefit of therapy, because therapy helps people, one, discover their own wounds, as well as their, their own needs, but helps in that healing process so that people have fewer episodes. Another thing, I have to check my notes, Another thing that, that medicine does not do is unfortunately, at least in, in my experience and the experience of a lot of the members of Team Thrive, which is Thrive with Bipolar Disorder on Facebook, is it doesn't stop the ruminating thoughts. So I'll talk with you guys about why. Ruminating thoughts occur when we're trying to figure out a problem. But we don't have all of the information, so we can't solve the problem. So these thoughts circle through our minds over and over and over again because we lack information and, and we don't have what, it, what we need to resolve it. So unfortunately, ruminating thoughts do play a significant role in bipolar disorder, especially both in mania and depression, um, but the medication does not make them go away. 
Another thing I have written in my notes that I wanted to share with you is based on the type of bipolar disorder you have, I'm living with bipolar disorder type 1, and it causes it causes me to speak before I think. And what I mean by that is as I'm speaking, I'm thinking. So I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking before I speak the way quote unquote normal people assume, you know, that they, they communicate. Um, it's actually a difference in our brain that I'm not going to get into in this video, but I may in, in the future talk about brain differences. Um, whereas people with bipolar 2, sometimes they think so much before they speak that they don't end up even speaking their thoughts because they spend so much time thinking about what they're going to say and how it'll be received. So it, it, a lot of it has to do with the type of bipolar disorder you have. Um, another, another thing that medicine does not help with is what's called jumbled or racing thoughts. And when you're living with bipolar disorder, you know what I mean by jumbled. And it's like your thoughts, they get so jumbled that you can't get them out of your mouth in the way that you would want them to. Or, um, or racing thoughts. And oftentimes during an episode, the medication can really help with this. But when people are nervous, or when they're anxious or excited, it causes thoughts to race. It causes thoughts to jumble. So that's another thing. And then the last, the last thing I have on my list that medicine doesn't do is it doesn't teach people with bipolar disorder the unspoken social rules. And so many people have shared with me, you know, Robin, I feel like I don't fit in. I feel like I don't belong. I feel like just just bad in a crowd or in a group because they don't know the social rules. It's like somebody else, everybody else who doesn't have bipolar disorder was given a handbook of how to behave in social situations. And people with bipolar disorder don't have that handbook. Um, what goes along with that is people with bipolar disorder type 1 tend to have, often, often tend to have more energy. And that energy can be overwhelming and it fits in with the, the unspoken rule, social rules because the majority of people aren't as exuberant as, as we are. So we actually have to learn to fit in in ways that other people don't. Sorry for that bad news about what, by what medication doesn't do. The good news is in therapy you can really work on all of these things. You can really learn how to work with, with, with living with bipolar disorder. So I hope, I hope this is useful and I'll see you soon. Bye.